Back in 1980, this river froze. And me and my ne'er-do-well buddies, we came down the river on skates. We were skating over waterfalls because they were frozen. It was about seven inches thick. And what we ended up doing as we sailed along on our skates was we went from way up at the border of Westfield all the way down to just above the waterfall. Why? Because we were high school kids and that's what we were doing. But as we were going along, I noticed several of these what I thought at the time were trickle dams made by somebody that wanted to raise the river level so they could go swimming in the summer. Because in the middle of the summer, the Westfield River gets very low. Then, several years later, I'm done with my degree program at Westfield State where, and my master's where I concentrated on the religious practices of the Eastern Woodland Danes, basically native people. And in that, I had encountered the fishware and I immediately thought, geez, I skated over five or six of these on the Westfield River here. So I took a canoe from my friend's property and came down, and it's exactly what I thought it was. But what our plan is today, my brother and I, is to basically get out there and throw a few casts and see if we can catch some fish off this fishware that, as I said, could be 5,000 years old, where the native people once did. And the people that were in this area when we meet them, the river tribes, are called the Agawam, the Agawam people. And these are the people that William Pension first met in 1635 when he came up the river on his pinnace to what we now call Pension Point, and he basically made a little deal with them. They set up a block house, and the following year, the first settlers of Springfield came so the native people are here on this river every spring, starting in April after the sugaring season, right through the end of June. And therefore, you'd, you'd expect that near this river, you would have had a lot of their crop fields. So what you have is two piles of rocks that meet in the river, creating a V whose point goes down current. Now, if you were here when this thing was functioning, and this thing might have been in play for 4,000 years, who knows? It, it's probably been here for a long, long time. And it would have been like a couple, two rock walls that went out. And those rock walls create dead current on both sides. During the spring high water, what you're gonna get is shad, salmon, herring, owlwives, lamprey, all the fish that migrate up this river are gonna, they don't, they don't just stay in the center of the current, they get tired. So what they do is they move from rock outcropping to rock outcropping to rock outcropping and they catch their breath. And then when a big female moves out, they'll follow. And so they would have come into these shallow water, soft water areas on the sides of the V to catch their breath before they went up the main current. And on this wall would have been standing native people, men, women, children, spearing them netting them, clubbing them. They weren't catching release fishermen like us. And they would have taken those fish and somewhere on the banks of this river, probably right up behind us, they would have been drying them. Now remember at the time, this was probably mostly field with a few uh, trees here and there in the rougher areas, but they would have had, a, a, they had a, dis we know that they had a, uh, a big village site, not far would be down the river from us. And there had to be one here too, because there's a fish wear, which would mean intensive work, getting the fish out of the water and then consuming them or cleaning them. And, you know, they might've smoked them. They, we don't really think they stored a lot of food. So they were basically catching them and eating them as quick as they could, recovering from the starving times of the winter. But this is during the high water. During the lower water, of June when the fish have now turned around and they're coming back to the sea because all the fish I mentioned Atlantic salmon, American shad, owlwives and herring they don't just go upstream and die. Some die during the spawning process but most survive and they come down the river and they want to get back to the sea and the native people would put up fish traps made of wicker and the, they, they, they come in all sizes you'll see them they look like giant wicker tubes they look like small baskets and they put them out there and fill their baskets with the returning fish. And some years they do very well. It all depends like it does for us who fish today 
on the state of the river, on the level of the river. You can have really wet years when most of the fish get right by this weir and the native people catch just a few. And then other years where the river level is low and they're catching more than they can, they can eat. In which case they might use them to fertilize crops. We do have a record that they did use fish, especially herring, to fertilize crop fields as they grew the three sisters in mounds and they put several herring in there to kind of bring nutrients into the soil. But, you know, some days you get them and some days you don't get them. We didn't get anything here, but you got some good views of a really cool historic site and a part of the Connecticut River watershed that, because it's in an urban environment, doesn't get a lot of attention. I mean, Robinson State Park is right here, but people don't come to look at this, which is really a, kind of a paleo wonder of our area. I mean, how many actual sites can you go to and see something that was done by the native people that's right in front of your eyes. I mean, people walk around the woods and they speculate about a boulder and they speculate about a, a rock here or a rock there. I even we got people speculating about bent trees as if trees could survive 400 years bent by the native people. Like, why would you bend a tree? What's your reasoning? As a way marker, you use boulders, you use river valleys, you use mountaintops, you don't, you don't bend a tree. <laughs> So my point is, of all the sites that you can go to that I can think of, this is a clear example, and, and the one in Ware, on the, or on the one on the Ware River, these are clear indications of human habitation and use of the river system for a long time, way back into the, the past, before, before the Europeans got here. So, kind of cool. Well, first, we broke the no swimming rule by wading out into the Westfield River between Agawam and West Springfield in what is called Mitnick Park. And we basically explored a few thousand year old at least fish wear that the native people here used to trap shad, salmon, and herring and alewives as they migrated up the river in the spring. We investigated that with our fishing poles, hoping to pick something up, but you know what, luck was not with us today. If you're interested in trees that are, you know, a little bit older than what you're gonna see in most of Western Massachusetts and State Forest, come on down to Robinson. It's really nice. It's got some beautiful, right, Steve, old trees? Come in here, we got, we're looking at some trees. That's not a really old oak, but I'd say that white pine there is 120 years old. It's a good, good age. And we got a beautiful, I love this black birch right here. Huh? What's a nice black birch? That is some old black birch. And white birch and a white You don't see that many that big. No. You know, they don't live that long. So when you go fishing the way we like to fish, catching fish, it's always good. We're not saying we don't want to catch fish, but just being outside and having some fun is what it's all about. And exploring in history. Whatever, in whatever way you want to get out to look at history, to, to, to fish. Look at natural history. We right. saw some spawning lampreys. That was pretty right. cool. Yeah. Most people would be all freaked out, but there's sea lampreys coming up to spawn and go back to sea. Part of the game. Another androgynous fish? Yep, another. Like, we don't like talk about like it. Because they don't have a good reputation because they're vampiric, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Parasitic. Yeah. But we figured out that when they come up and they spawn, they create a bed in the gravel that actually cleans the gravel, which allows insect and fish larvae to get down in there, which if they didn't exist, the bottom would be much more algified. And probably also much more um, homogenous, right? So right. it's very different. Because they create those pits, yep. which allow trout and other fish bass right. to hide under the current lip. Right. Right. So they have a place. People think about them, they're gross. We don't like them. They have a place in the whole plan. And uh, we, were, we were interested to see them. If we could have got the throne down right over the water, you would have seen them, but <laughs> we would have had to get right at them.